Hello, and welcome to Avio's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business, sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. If you haven't noticed, there's a few new things back. Uh, we've got the RE20 back in the booth that, or in the studio that I'm doing my video with. Um, now, this isn't my regular camera. It is, a, uh, of course, my Logitech. This is a... Um, uh, like a $200 camera, so, you know, it's a little bit better, but my um, Sony a6000 is still packed somewhere, so I'm not sure where that is, but I'm excited to be coming to you today talking about a topic I think is very important, which is, um, it, it came from a question that was posed in our Facebook group, a VO's Journey Facebook group, and the question was, what voiceovers should I go after just starting out? All right. So that's why I put the title, go after these voiceovers if you are just starting out uh, as a voice actor. Real quick, before we dive into that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Also, hit that bell notification because if you don't hit the bell notification after you subscribe, it won't actually send you notifications that I'm going live. And we are running a special right now for a VO's Journey Elite Academy. It's absolutely Absolutely, um, one of the best things that I think uh, has been put together in a long time. We have five different classes a week, everything from marketing to voice acting to learning your DAW, the technical work to business systems, and a whole bunch of other uh, information and tutorials on there to help you get started and to grow your voiceover business. We're running a special right now. There's a link below to that, 50% off your first month. So I hope you check that out. And the phone rings. Of course it does. Anyways, let's dive into this topic. What type of voiceover should you go after when you're just starting? out and I know that and I'm sure and please do leave comments but I'm sure there's going to be a lot of um, different feelings on this topic but I thought that it would be important to kind of give you how I started especially um, if you are doing what I'm doing which is you know primarily representing myself um, and that just basically means that um, you know I'm not focusing on getting lots of agents, I'm focusing on getting work. You know what I mean? So I represent myself. Um, and because of that, you know what I mean? Um, starting out, I think it's important to have some wins up front. I think back, if I didn't get voiceover work when I first started, I probably would have been uh, a lot more frustrated, uh, a lot more... Um, I don't know, they were like unwilling to keep going maybe. So, you know, I think it's important that the first thing you do when you're first starting out is you want to go to get work, to start working, all right, getting paid to do voiceover. And I know that might be like, well, isn't that what we're here for? But I want you to stop and think about that. I didn't say you need to go make a million dollars to get paid to do voiceover or you need to charge the most expensive rates to do voiceover, okay, because um, we're worried about what some other Facebook group might think of us, okay? What I'm saying is, is you want to get paid to work, now, that always kind of goes to the next stretch, which is the price discussion. What do I charge and what work should I go after or should I go after? So when I first started in voiceover, um, I first started because, you know, I was looking to get back into performance. I hadn't done theater for a while live. You know, I was just had been teaching for a while and I, I was depressed and wanted to do something. And I had listened to a lot of audiobooks, right? Um, Self-help books, you know, books about, you know, making yourself better, um, learning about business, etc. So, you know, I always thought it would be cool to be an audiobook narrator. Uh, little did I know on a side note, but anyways, I always thought it would be cool. And I remember on my first, my birthday, my 37th birthday, I was sitting on the couch and somehow, I, again, I have no idea why, but you know, a video popped up about narrating audiobooks from your house. And I thought, wow, that would be really cool. So, you know, and I know I've told this story a bunch. I went out and got packing blankets and PVC pipe and a $40 microphone set up in my, you know, little office space right next to the kitchen. Bad mistake. But anyways, I did that anyways. And um, the reason why I kind of regurgitate that story to you is because 
if I had started doing something different. So basically, I started on ACX and I started auditioning for audiobooks. Now, at this time, I wasn't a part of any particular Facebook group. I didn't know anybody who was doing voiceover, really. I I didn't um, have that much of a clue about the industry, right? I was just, I saw his video about just that you could do, you know, uh, vo- uh, audiobooks on ACX and that you just had to audition yourself. Then I went on ACX and I watched a bunch of their tutorials, um, you know, from their university uh, and I started auditioning for audiobooks. And the reason why I brought up that other part too about not knowing anybody else is because, you know, the more you get into groups, the more you're going to start to hear all the chatter about what you should and shouldn't do. So I wasn't in any groups at the time, and I look back and I was very thankful. Now, they didn't have a VO's Journey Facebook group. Of course, I'm biased, right, because it's my group. But, you know, I I didn't know of any. So, you know, I was just gung-ho, dead set on being an audiobook narrator, and I thought that I would do nonfiction audiobooks. So that's literally all I did. I just went on ACX and I would audition every single night and I would do audiobooks. And for every about 10 to 15 auditions, I got an offer. And I think back to my my overall career as a voice actor um, that, you know, at that time, that was such a validation to me that I was doing something that I should be doing. Now, let me be straight. Some of these offers that I would take were royalty share, where I didn't make any money, or you know, $50 per finished hour. Yes, it's not a great deal of money at all by any means, but the point is I always had a job that I was hired for that I either was making money or could be making money down the road from royalties. That's a big, big difference than a lot of people I see or I work with who start off and it takes them such a long time to get their first job because they're going for big commercial work or they're trying to do something that other people have been doing for you know years and years and years and have all this clout built up around them. So it's really important that you start in places where I think you're going you're going to get wins. OK, um, and, and there's another reason for that. I always thought clearly I wasn't going to make a million dollars being an audiobook narrator. I learned that after a short period of time, especially with the amount of work it is to narrate audiobooks. But I learned, too, that it was great practice. See, I had a lot of issues, which I, I, I still couldn't at the time realize or figure out why. But I had a trouble reading out loud without messing up like every other sentence. I really did. And at the time, it was very frustrating to me. But I think to myself, if I hadn't gone through that hell, if you will, because to me for a while it seemed like it was really hard, if I hadn't gone through that and that practice and the trying to get it done right, I would have possibly had a lot of issues with working other jobs. So I think that it was so much beneficial, not only for my ego, if you will, or the validation that I should be doing something like this, but also it was really good for me to have all that practice and to be paid. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, hey, start, you know, you could do something from LibriVox and stuff, and that's fine too. You know, you could do those, that's free. There's nothing wrong with that. It's for charity. I think it's great. But I always thought, why not do stuff where I'm also paid to practice, right? Because I'm not doing, you know, it's not a lot, but at least I'm making something or, you know what I'm saying? So this was something that I felt was really great because as I started joining groups, I was like, hey, I'm the guy who always has work. You know, Um, I'm this magical guy who always seems to have audiobooks in his queue, Right. I never went around saying how much money I was making from these audiobooks. Okay. But the point was, though, is someone was hiring me to do it. Okay. Now, you can, people can argue and say, well, I'm never, I'm not going to be taken advantage of. And that's okay. I didn't view it that way because I viewed it as I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't know how to edit very well. I didn't know how to record very well. I had a $40 microphone. Right. I had I, I, I had never done voiceover in my life. 
I looked at it as a way for people to take a chance on me so that I could learn and grow. I did the best that I could at the time, all right, but I needed to learn and grow. And it was such a fantastic education because as I got better, you know, I started putting myself up in other places and I started getting more opportunities other places where I started to get better and the audiobooks kept me going along the way. Now, to to wrap all of this up, I really believe that when you're first starting out, a great place for you to go after and the place that I recommend all of my uh, voice over, voice actors go after is to start with audiobooks. Someone, so I, I work with, I do work with some people who are like, I do not want to do audiobooks. I don't want to do all that work, and that's that's fine. It's your decision, of course. I just think that the education you get, the learning that you get, having to do hours of editing and processing, learning your voice learning what your voice can and cannot do, learning what your microphone can and cannot do, your systems, your studio, the sound, all of this stuff, by having all this time to work, like with audiobooks, it really does work. You hear the dog, my dog barking in the background. We have a little puppy. Now she's barking around. Anyways, so that was distracted. I was on a roll there. But the point I'm trying to make is I really do believe audiobooks is a great place for you to begin. ACX is a great place, but there's also a lot of other places that you can get that you can also, you know, go and do. But ACX is one of the best places to get started because you don't have to have a um, you don't have to have really a demo. You don't have to have all of this stuff. It's literally basic. It's just audition based pretty much. Now, I've put out other content as you grow as a voice actor. ACX is not the best place for you to grow your business. But that's not what we're talking about in this this video. We're talking about what is the best place, the best voiceovers for you to go after when you're just starting out. Because you have the highest chance of getting work from ACX, etc. Does that make sense? All right, listen, I hope that you liked this video. Please leave your comments below, you know, and your questions. I'd love to answer them. It's so good to be back into the studio and everything. Um, Also, don't forget to check out that link below for the half off our first month of Avios Journey uh, Lead Academy. And uh, I'm so excited to bring you another video. It's so good to be back. And um, it's just going to keep getting better and better. Have a great week, you guys. Happy Monday. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye.